Bonjour mesdames et messieurs. Today I show you my workflow on shooting amazing places. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 70 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France, and I'm very happy to be with you guys. Last week, I showed you how you could create a portfolio using squarespace.com uh, in about 10, 12 minutes. It's an amazing, amazing technology. One thing I forgot to say, I think about on last week's episode is that when you upload the photos, the best quality that I find is to have them uh, at least 2,500 pixels wide and then they will do the math for the rest. Why? Because now the biggest iMac 27 inch are about that resolution. So this is how you get the best result. I forgot to say that last week, so I'm adding it now. This week, we are gonna to go to Page, Arizona into the Antelope Canyon. It's an amazing place I was a couple of years ago and uh, I've always dreamed to go there because I remember staying in hotel rooms years ago where they had these amazing photos from the Antelopes. It's one of the most famous place uh, in the world when you want to shoot landscape photography. So the thing is, when you come to such a place, it takes a certain amount of effort. And um, I'm going to show you exactly what I do with my photos, uh, the different techniques I try to get out of the, to get the best out of it, you know, really to, uh, to, to share with the world, you know, uh, the, the best impression, the best emotion I can get out of it and the different techniques I try and use. So it's going to be a bit of a longer video but I think it's worth it. So let's not wait anymore and let's go to Arizona page. Mesdames et messieurs, before we start, just a little warning. If you don't want to spend thousands of dollars crossing the entire planet to come to Page, Arizona to the Antelope Canyon Valley, wait for hours in a burning sun, cross the desert at your risk of your own life with lovely Indians, but a very shaky bus. All you have to do to get these photos and these three raw files is basically to jump over to my website photosearch.com and sign up on my free newsletters and I'll give you these raw files for free. So you don't have to travel, you don't have to do anything and you can just sit in your salon and uh, retouch these photos. So that's something yeah I like to do. I mean it, it, it took me quite something to get this, these photos and I've been dreaming, dreaming about going to the Antelope Canyon for a very long time because it's you know it's one of these places when you do landscape photography you have to shoot you know everybody's done it it's beautiful colors and um the whole purpose of this little video that i want to show you today which is a bit longer than usual is to show you really how i work when i spend a lot of money to come to one specific place and try to get the, the best out of it if you want so what i usually do is i try a bit all the current you know, uh, today's techniques to really get the best out of the scene. And you will see what I mean in a second. So first, let me talk to you about how I shot this. Uh, when I did not take the photographic tour, um, it was more expensive. I didn't have time. Anyways, I didn't do it. So I went on a regular tour with a, a lot of other tourists. And the problem that I had is that we were moving groups by groups. And basically what I did is that I was holding back, letting the group go forward and for and then I had another group coming in my back, so I usually had like one second or two seconds to shoot. I was on a tripod, but the problem is that I wanted to HDR. I wanted to take a normal shot, an underexposed shot, and an overexposed shot. Now that takes a little bit of time because you gotta have the right exposure for all. So I took a decision. I decided to, uh, if you look at the uh, metadata, to put my um, lens at f4. Honestly, I regret this a little bit because uh, you will see my photos are not super, super sharp. They can be more, more sharp, you see, because the autofocus sometimes is going to uh, hold on to one corner of a rock. And that rock is going to be, if I zoom at 100%, you will see that it's not super sharp everywhere. This is, you know, this is pretty sharp. The lens probably, you know, catch that. And, uh, you know, this is a bit soft here, you know, I mean, so anyways. Uh, why did I do that? Because I wanted in one second to be able to have all three exposures. So I decided to not only be i4, but also ISO 400. That is something I never do. But I wanted to be able to HDR the hell out of it in less than a second. So that was my choice. But that was the only way I could get that, you know, uh, really, really good. So I was just, you know, on my tripod and bracketing and bracketing and bracketing. So once I've done that, uh, 
the first thing I want to show you is uh, something which I don't advise to do, but some people have been asking questions is like, what is the best workflow on HDR? Would you first retouch the photos uh, before in Lightroom or just HDR them first and retouch them afterwards? So I'm going to show you the difference between the two. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do, this is like totally not retouch. This is, you know, out of the camera and I'm going to select all three right click export i'm going to export them to the desktop okay i'm going to while i'm at it uh i'm going to create a folder that i'm going to call antelopes all right and uh, i'm going to export them as tiff pro photo rgb 16 bit now why pro photo because that's the bigger space the more quality space that uh, adobe has and 16 bit is the best quality that it has so I'm going to export that and I'm going to try to make an HDR out of it using Google's uh, latest HDR software called HDR FX Pro, which is for me, I've been using Photomatix for years whenever I was doing HDR, but HDR FX Pro, which is here, I believe is better. Now I have a little communication problem between Lightroom and HDR FX Pro where I have to export and import. Uh, the plugin that they give me doesn't work. I've tried everything. It doesn't work anyway. So. This is a GFX Pro. I'm on the desktop. I'm going to take my three TIFF file, which I just exported. So these are like really high quality TIFF file with, without anything. So I'm going to just click on create HDR. Alignment, it is aligned. Ghost reduction, there's no need of ghost reduction because the, the ghost reduction is when something is moving. Yeah, you know, chromatic aberration. Yeah, please do something about that and just click on create HDR. Now, I'm not going to spend hours on this software. I just want to show you a bit how it works. It's super simple. And um, I just love the Nick softwares. I mean, I'm in love. This already is the only plugin that I use sometimes. Okay, so on your left, you have a uh, different, basically, uh, proposition that they, they, they give you. One that I like a lot is uh, um, Deep One. Deep One, I think, is pretty cool. It's pretty much to what I want to do. But I'm going to go back on default, and I want to show it to you how you can create it from scratch. Uh, the first thing is tone compression. If you go to the right, um, basically, this will act with the rest of your settings. But I always put tone compression like around 28. Method strength, if you go to the right, it's going to be very HDR looking or very strength. But it's also based on that, meaning these two settings are going to react to whatever you put there. So for now, I'm just going to put tone compression a bit to the right and method strength a bit to the right. But here, that's the HDR method. This is the most important part. So you've got normal on the right, uh, strong there, sorry, strong, normal, subtle, off, okay? So I'm may maybe going to go on normal, for example, and then you've got the details. So you, on the left, you've got soft, you know, realistic, action treated, detailed, and look how much detail is getting, and grungy. So I think I'm going to go for realistic. And then this is one I like a lot, drama, flat, natural, deep, dingy, sharp, and grainy. I think I'm gonna go for something like deep, okay? Then the exposure, I think it's a bit too bright, so I'm gonna lower the exposure. And uh, yeah, boost a bit the contrast. Now, all the Nick software have an amazing, amazing, amazing settings, which I really like. It's called the structure settings. So I'm gonna move it to the right, and what it does, it just really gets the details to pop out. I just love that. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to boost the saturation on this one because I think the antelope, the whole point is the red, you know, the colors which is there is quite amazing. Okay. And uh, that's about it. So I repeat, tone compression, I just went a bit stronger uh, on the HDI method. But, you know, you can just give it a try. You know, whatever works, I change on every photo. You know, it's pretty like self-explanatory. You know, you just look, you know, I put on normal. I was on normal there. I was on realistic on details. Maybe I can go to, no, I think I'm going to keep, stay on realistic and drama. I was into deep, deep drama. Okay, and uh, and then exposure. I lowered a bit the exposure. Now shadows, I didn't touch so much. Maybe, oh yeah, I can boost a bit the shadows. And, uh, and the highlights, maybe boost a bit the highlights, add a bit of contrast, add a bit of structure, and a bit of saturation. Okay. Now, that's one way of doing it, and uh, I'm going to save that, okay, and I'm going to call it uh, HDR 
no Lightroom, meaning there was no retouching in Lightroom first. Okay, I'm gonna save it. And now, I'm gonna, uh, now I'm gonna start retouching the photo in, uh, in, in Lightroom. And the whole idea is I'm gonna show you a lot of different techniques and at the end we're gonna compare and you're gonna see what you like the best. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retouch, not completely but a bit this photo, and then I'm gonna sync that on all three photos and redo my HDR with retouch photo and see the difference. So I'm gonna pop the shadows, because my theory in life is that a raw file, as long as you have not touched it in Lightroom, it's got hidden data and it's got hidden information. And that only a raw software can really get the best out of it. So my philosophy is do everything I can in Lightroom, then go to another software. But I wanted to show you why. So bring down the highlights. Let's do the white point. So uh, I repeat again, to do the white point, you have to hold on the Alt key and go right until you see some white coming, and then you have to back down until you don't see anything. Because if you see some white, all you see here, anything that appears here, which is blue, white, or, or red, is things which are 100% white, totally burned. We don't necessarily want that, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do the opposite with the blacks. I press the Alt key, and I'm gonna go left, okay, until I see some. Now, on the blacks, I always go further than the whites, meaning that I don't stop here when I can, when I see a bit of, uh, you know, purple or blue stuff, I go further down. Yeah, I want deep shadows, something like that. And then I adjust by hand. But already it's pretty good looking, you know. I love how Lightroom does it. That is why I hardly do any HDR. But I do sometimes, you know. And doing HDR when you have a lot of texture can be interesting. But we're going to compare this at the end. So I'm going to add a bit of clarity. I'm going to add a bit of vibrance on this one. Ooh, I kind of like it, you know. Okay, so that's my basic Lightroom stuff. You know what, I'm gonna try to go to camera calibration and give it a little bit of um, camera landscape. Ooh, landscape is cool, it's making it brighter, so I'm gonna make it darker again. And maybe add even more clarity. Okay, now let's take care, and that's a very important step. Let's take care of the noise. I always like to deal with the noise in Lightroom. So there is not that much noise. I was at 400 ISO, but it was a properly exposed photo. So uh, I'm gonna, on the noise reduction, I think I'm gonna go, yeah, about, yeah, something like that. 30 should do well. And you know, I have this formula. Whenever I do 30 with the noise, my sharpening is gonna be 100 minus whatever I did with the noise. So 100 minus 30 would be 70. Something like that. Okay, and, uh, Let's enable, no, the profile correction is gonna take out, yeah, it's gonna take out any vignetting and remove chromatic aberration. That's pretty cool, oh, in case there is some. Okay, now one very important point. This is a raw file, guys, and you know that the raw file, the white balance is not fixed. Now, I find that, you see, the daylight, when you are into some uh, a place which is very red, like this Antelope uh, Valley, and you have lights coming from outside. The light coming from outside is actually very blue. Now check this out. If I move this to the left, I can add more blue to the photo. And I think it's kind of interesting because what it does is um, it makes a contrast. You know, I like that contrast, uh, the blue here and the red here, you know. Uh, I think I'm even gonna boost the vibrance to make the reds even more redder. Uh, something like that. I kind of like that result. But you see, now I've got two contrasts. I've got a color contrast going on on the top of all the other contrasts, which is happening because lots of contracts here. Okay, maybe it's a bit strong on the blue, but I kind of like that. Just make it a bit more blue and maybe a bit more purple, something like that. Yeah, I like that colors. Okay, so now I sort of like got the best of that raw file. So I'm going to select all three. I'm going to click on sync. Synchronize all that. And what you see, guys, is really something that I do like on a daily basis. If I have very quality photos, you know, if I did spend a lot of money, you know, I shot some like scenes, some, you know, a monument in Paris, like an amazing light, or I've been up in New York and doing like, you know, whatever, you know, I've got something special. This is special. The antelope is special. So, okay, now I'm going to right click and I'm going to export. 
Now, it reminds me that it's in the subfolders antelope. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna choose the antelope folder. I'm gonna choose it. And I'm gonna, so this is gonna create a subfolder to the antelope which is already there. And this one I'm gonna call retouched. Uh, retouch in Lightroom. Okay, so it's gonna export them in a subfolder and I'm still getting, keeping a TIFF Pro Photo RGB 16 bit, in the same, same value, which is basically the best of the best. So I'm exporting that. Now uh, I'm gonna be launching HDR FX Pro, which is close for some reason. So I'm relaunching it, HDR FX Pro. Okay, and I'm just waiting for my Lightroom to export all these three files. And you can try this at home. You'll see it's pretty fun. Oh, that's my website. Okay, is your FX Pro file open? Okay, now I've got this new retouched Lightroom, which is a subfolder with my three TIFF files. And uh, I open them up and I just do create HDR. Thank you very much. And you know, I try that and sometimes it comes out good, better than the uh, without row. Statistically, uh, retouching first in Lightroom and then HDR always gave me a better result than the opposite. Okay, so um, I think it kept the same settings than before, which is cool. But uh, let's uh, let's see here. I think it's too bright. Uh, drama, let's see what drama looks like. All right, structure, I'm gonna add to structure. Uh, compression, maybe a bit more. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, the, the rest didn't change. The HDR method didn't change from the last photo. So the normal depths, it's still realistic on details. You see if I go there, it's just way too much details. Okay, drama is cool. Let me see this one. Eh, it's not so bad. Okay, maybe we go back to, oh yeah, we were in deep before. Shadows, let me see on the shadows, yeah. I don't like when the shadows is too dark, so I'm gonna open them up and highlights, let's see what it does. I just move the slider and look what it does. Okay, it's kind of cool. Maybe lower slightly bit the exposure. Yeah, structure. This is kind of cool. Uh, now, sometimes what I do is I love deep one. Let's check out what deep one looks. Oh, it's, it looks pretty cool. Deep one is not so bad, but I think it's just too bright. Okay, and I think the saturation is a bit too much maybe. But I kind of like that. I wanted this, you know, I love saturated photos. I mean, you know, I like when they burn the eye, you know, you look at them and you're like, ah, oh, it hurts, you know. No, I'm kidding. But, the, the, you know, the lights you can get down there is pretty crazy, you know, so. But, okay, this is maybe a bit way too much on the saturation, I don't know. I don't know how much you can tolerate, you know, my saturation. But I really like very saturated photos and I think it they, they come out really nice. Okay, so, so that's, some, that's a treatment I kind of like. So I'm gonna save this. And we're gonna call it, uh, let's see, uh, retouched in Lightroom. I'm gonna call it uh, HDR uh, retouched Lightroom. Okay, I'm saving it. So it actually gets me out of HDR FX Pro when I do that. Boom, I'm out of here. Okay, now I'm gonna re import uh, this. So I'm gonna go File, Import Photos and Videos. I'm gonna to go to my desktops, which is here, the antelopes. Now you've got the raw files. I'm not gonna re-import the, all the TIFF files. So I'm gonna click on un uncheck all. I'm just gonna take the HDR no Lightroom and the HDR retouch Lightroom. So, so we can compare the two. Okay, so the two photos are imported. Now I'm gonna open here this on the left and I'm gonna add this to the collection that I'm doing. This is episode 50. I'm gonna add this to the collection and go to the collection. Okay, I added, that's also, you know, a little, so you get a bit of habit on, on using Lightroom. Okay, so now, I wanna compare this. So this is the version, you can see this is HDR retouch Lightroom. This is the result we have of having first retouch in Lightroom, and this is the version uh, with not retouching in Lightroom. So if you wanna compare them better, you can just shift click and you press the C for compare, let me get that away, and I can compare. So obviously I went a lot further on the right on the saturation, but what happened is that I already saturated it in Lightroom because I did my retouching, and the fact of making an HDR added even more saturation to it. Now if I zoom at 100%, 
on the photo, I can compare the the details. Yeah, it's pretty much the same in terms of details, you know, the structure and um, the noise and everything. It's just that this one, I did the white balance. I Obviously, I prefer this one, the one on, on uh, the one that has first been retouched, okay? But now, uh, I have to compare with this. This is the version, this is the raw file just retouched, and this is the HDR. So let's compare both of them. I'm gonna select both and zoom, okay? On the left, we have the HDR, where I retouch in Lightroom in HDR and FX Pro, and on the right, I have the Lightroom, okay? Now, uh, I do a lot of big prints, and I don't know if you can tell, but the, the RAW file just retouched in Lightroom is just, uh, you know, as a better quality. It has less saturation, okay? But you know what? I can keep on adding saturation on this one. I can just go back here in Develop, and make it as much saturated as this one by adding a bit of saturation, maybe not that much, but, you know, so what is the moral of the story? You know, honestly, yeah, this one has a bit more structure, like check it out. This is the HDR version and this is the non-HDR version. You know, okay, yes, it has more details. Obviously it has more details. Let me show you that again with the compare. I'm gonna press C. Okay, so, uh, on my right, okay, let's zoom out to make sure. Yeah, on my right, I have the HDR version, and on my left, I have just the RAW file. Now, see how we get more of the details on the HDR version, like, uh, yeah, more details. So, it's important when you're doing print. So, you know, I would hesitate, you know. I think the one which is not HDR is a bit sharper, a bit more natural than the one, but the one which is HDR is a bit like, wow, you know. So anyways, we have a problem on both of these photos is we have a gentleman here. But I wanna show you one more technique that I try. There's one more thing that I do. What I also do is I take the raw file, which where I got the best out of, which is this one, and then I open up in, um, so I do a right click, edit in Photoshop CC, and then I'm gonna use another plugin. That's something that I do also, which is the Color FX Pro. Uh, I have a Color FX Pro is another software, another plugin from Nick Software. So all I do is I go to Select, sorry, Filter, Nick Collection. The whole collection is only $140. It's really, if you have to buy some plugins, Nick ones are really good. And I don't get any commission for saying that. I don't get no money. I really believe it's the best. Nick Collection, Color FX Pro. So you'll see it's pretty similar to, uh, to the HDR FX Pro. You know, it's from the same company. It belongs to Google now. Now, uh, they have tons of effects that you can do, uh, you know, like black and white conversion, B color effects, B color use define, bleach bypass color, brilliance, warms, oh, you name it, like so much color stylizer. You have to try all them. It's, you know, it's basically different look, cross balance, you know, film grain, all kind of stuff. Now, I have a whole bunch, which is my favorite. And in my favorite, there's one that I'm gonna use on these photos, maybe two. It's called a detailing extractor. Now check it out. Uh, before the detail extractor, after. You know what it does is that it really gets the details out. Now the saturation on, on this one and the warmth is pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna go any further. By default, it's like 25% details more. I can go a lot more, but it's gonna look crazy. So I leave it on 25. Um, Sometimes I add a filter. And I, I try like pro contrast on the top of it. Pro contrast has got like all kind of contrast. Correct. Uh, so this one, uh, correct color cast, if you go right, is going to basically take the, the red out. Correct contrast, if you go to the right, is going to give you different type of contrast. Maybe this one is kind of cool. And then dynamic contrast. What well, is a different type of contrast also? I usually play around it until I get something that I like. So, okay, that's before pro contrast, after it's not a major change, but that's basically the idea. Then I click on okay. And so the Nick software is gonna go on top. On its own layer, it's gonna be called Nick software, which is pretty cool. So I can just see the before and after. I have to wait for a little bit. Okay. Let's wait a little bit. All right. And uh, yeah, that's the before and after. So the details, you know, the details really got all the details up. 
Sometimes what I do, if I think it's a bit too much, I'm going to back this down. I just lower the opacity of that Nick software. You know, I go about halfway. Yeah, I like what it does. You know, I go about that halfway. Okay, then file. Oh, then before I close, I want to show you a little technique. You know, I have a, a person there. So I'll show you a little technique how to take that out with a stem tool in a second. So for this, I'm going to take both of these layers and I'm going to go to layers. I'm going to merge the layer. Okay. Then I'm going to take my basic layer and I'm going to reduplicate it. And I'm going to take care of that person. Now, when you want to take out, uh, let's say, yeah, I want to take out this lady because as I explained to you, you know, people were coming in and out all the time. I can, the best that I found is just the clone stem tool, which is the S key. The problem with the clone stem tool, and by the way, any tools on Photoshop, you can make big or small by using the control and the hold, hold key, holding down and holding the, your mouse. Now, I want to show you something. You see how this is very feathered, you know, like this is a very smooth brush. That's very important. The feathering, you d decide by going up and down. If I go down, I'm at 100% harness. Never do that with a stamp. Go up until it's very like this, very feathered. Okay, I'm going to make it smaller. Now, what happens is that if I press here or here, right? Now, this is my source point. Now, I have a little preview. And if I go here, it's not going to work because you see the shape of the rock is like, you know, it's just, if I do that, it's going to not be natural. You can, you can tell something's wrong. So I'm going to erase that. I'm going to reduplicate that. The way to go is that you, uh, when you have something that is to protect that and for that, you make a selection. So the best is to zoom in big time, take the pen tool. Okay. And, uh, we click one time here and I just, another time and I just click and drag and I follow the curve, click and drag, follow the curve, click and drag, follow the curve, click and drag. Okay. Then I click here, here, here. Okay. And then I click on the first point. Oops. Yeah. I think so. It's kind of cool. And then I right click and I make a selection. Now, one thing that is very important is the feather radius on this type of operation. I put it down at least at three pixels. Okay, because it's going to make a, a not so sharp selection. So now I have selected this area. Okay. And now when I have this thing, I'm protecting this area. So if I take the stem tool, which is here, and just like before, uh, I'm just going to take like, for example, something which is here and, and I'm, I'm going to click now. See what happens magically. I am protecting. I'm just clicking here, getting that dark part. Oops, no, sorry. I'm going to go back. Oh, if you want to go back several times, you press command alt Z. Okay. I have to make this maybe a bit smaller. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm here and I'm just going to take some of that darkness and click here, you know, and, uh, yeah. And it's going to give me a much more better result. Now, unfortunately I made a bit of a mess, mess up here, but I'm going to randomize that by just clicking some stuff here. Yeah. Something like that. I don't think anybody will notice, but this way I've protected that. You see, it's a lot more natural and, uh, yeah, it just looks, uh, way better. Okay. So then once I'm done, I just close this now. It's going to re-import that version in Photoshop. And it's just, you know, a bit like next level. But you see on this one, I ended up basically using uh, the raw file and not doing even an HDR when I've been doing HDR for years. Uh, so let me show you again the final result. This is the Lightroom version, uh, you know, just Lightroom and nothing else. This is Lightroom with, uh, oh, sorry. Now, this is Lightroom, I, I, I'm wrong, and this is my preferred version. This is Lightroom with what we did with the HDR FX Pro, with taking out the lady, you know, that's the, the, the one I like the most. Okay, and then this is the Lightroom version, just Lightroom with no, uh, this plugin additionally. And then we have the HDR uh, Lightroom Retouch, which is kind of nice because it's got lots of texture, more than, than, than even this one, if you look at it. So honestly, I kind of like this one. And then you've got the HDR no Lightroom, which is the one I like the least, which is being HDR, but no, no Lightroom treatment first. So honestly, I'm like, 
hesitating really between these two. So let, let's compare them again. On my left, we've got the HDR version. And on my right, we've got just the Lightroom version. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Uh, yeah, there's a bit more texture on this one. You know, it's kind of really hard to say. Now, before I finish, I decided to use this version. Uh, I really like the HDR one. You know, I really like this kind of the look that it has. You know what? I like the HDR version. But then what I would do is I would do the same handling here and get the lady out. Actually, on this one, I prefer the HDR version. It's funny because the first time I did it, I think I went for the raw file version. And now I'm in love with this HDR version. It's kind of weird. So, okay. Now, this one, one thing I'm going to do is uh, I always, and I cannot help it, uh, do some a bit of dodge and burn on a photo. This is not so much needed because you've got lots of stuff going on on this photo. Lots of lights, a lot of things, you know, but... I play around with things, you know, I cannot help it. I want to try to get like, for example, a little beam here. Uh, let's see if we can get a little beam from uh, inside. Make it, uh, yeah, not so big. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can make that beam a bit more blue or a bit more yellow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, a little beam there, maybe. Uh, let me see, I think I went a bit too far. So when you go too far on, on a, let's see how it looks. Yeah, I made it maybe a bit too strong. So you can just press the option key and that becomes an eraser. I'm going to erase some of that beam. I think I went a bit too, too far. I just wanted a little more beam from outside, you know, not so much, but just a little bit more. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm going to press on new. Let's see here uh, if we add a bit of uh, light here, maybe that could be cool. Not too much, not too much. One thing is, uh, I, I get a lot of people who send me photos, you know, after they watch my episodes and, uh, you know, they want my viewpoint. It. And there's one common mistake that I see, and, and, and believe me, it's a mistake that I've done over and over and over and over again, and I keep doing it today, is that when you have an effect that you like, usually you just go too much for it. You know, you just like go crazy for it. You go, ooh, this is amazing. I love this grungy look. And then, you know, you just go way too much on it. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a disease that most of photographers have. You know, you've got a new magic wand and you just want to abuse it, you know. So basically what I'm do doing is just shaping it a bit more, you know. The way you shape things is you enhance uh, a little bit some of the shadows, you know, and some of the light. So let me show you the before the brush, after the brush. Yeah, it's a bit too much. I don't know if I'm going to go. You know what? I don't like this brush. I think some of the brushes are really too much. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I went a bit too far on some of them. I don't, you know, I just give it a try on things. Let me see again before, after, before, after. Yeah, I think uh, this one, the beam is not working. Uh, this is not working so much. This is kind of working, you know, but I like this to be bright. And yeah, but uh, the rest I don't like so much. Yeah, that was, that was kind of fine, but not this one. You know, you got to try. You got to try. So uh, last but not least, I like to close some of my photos. What I mean by that is, you know, do a vignetting. So uh, now you could do the post crop vignetting, you know, which is the lazy way of doing it, which is just that, and you're done, and you've done a vignetting. And the vignetting really helps to get into the photo. Now, I don't necessarily want to do that. I prefer to use the ND filter. I go here, I make this a bit a lower exposure, okay, and then I move around the corner until I've got something that I like. I just want to, you know, make this, maybe turn this around, so something like that, okay, and uh, let's make the same one here. I just want to make this, yeah, like this, let's make one here, okay, this one I'm going to make a bit darker. Okay, and I'm gonna back it down a little bit. Okay, and I don't want a vignette effect here because this is where the light's coming from. Maybe a bit here, you know, and back it down. Maybe a bit slightly here on the side and back it down. So I'm really like doing a tailor-made vignette effect. Okay, this is too much or this is too much maybe. I'm gonna back this down a bit and back this down a bit. But you know, you get the idea. You're doing your own, your own vignetting. Yeah, and this is... But 
Uh, I don't like. I don't like what it does here in the corner. Okay, and what you can do also if there's a vignette effect that you like. You know what? This I'm gonna take out. Yes, I think it's too much. Okay, anyways, that's about it. Um, so yeah, I just have to erase that person. But yeah, that would be the final photo. I like how it pops, you know. So this is just to show you a bit everything you can try. And you see, I had the choice between just the Lightroom photo, which is kind of cool, you know, or no, sorry, just the Lightroom or Lightroom is a little bit of HDR Fix Pro, you know, or uh, or this one, which is, you know, uh, HDR and but they have first been retouched in Lightroom. So it's, I know it's a lot, but you know, when I spend a lot of money going to Pedro Arizona, like lots, uh, you know, hotels, blah, 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 you know, it costs money, you know, th several thousand of dollars, you know, to get these shots. And so uh, I want to get the best out of it. So if I spend an hour or 45 minutes trying different photographic retouching techniques, you know, what the hell, it's nothing compared to what it cost me to get the photos. So anyways, I am offering you these photos. Try it at home, print them if you want, you know, just... Don't forget to say that it's me who took them. And uh, I hope this inspired you uh, to try this, all these kind of different techniques on your photos. Thank you very much and let's get back to my room. Okay guys, I hope you liked that tutorial. It was very fun for me to do and I think it will answer a lot of questions because many people have been asking me, but do you do HDR? Don't you do HDR? Do you use Photomatics? Do you use HDRFX Pro? This has changed over the last two, three years. Honestly, I mostly do just one raw file in Lightroom, but sometimes I do HDR like this time, for example, and usually I go for the HDR FX Pro, which I find a bit more powerful than Photomatics. That's just my viewpoint. Okay, guys, thank you for being there, and I'll see you next week.